Hi everyone, Jules here from The Board Game Barbecue. I'm here today to talk about an exciting new game being published by Stonemaier Games, and that is Libertalia Winds of Galecrest. Now, this isn't an original title. This is actually a remake of uh, an old game from 10 years ago, just titled Libertalia. And it's a quick uh, one to six player game, about 30 to 60 minutes, depending on the player count. And it's really easy and really fun. I'll give you a brief overview of how the game works. So in Libertalia, the game is played over three voyages with each voyage consisting of a number of days. Your first voyage you only play for four days. The second one goes to five and the third one goes to six days. At this point, you can see I've set up for the second voyage of the game. Each, every player has a deck of 40 unique cards with different abilities that trigger at different points in the game. One player will shuffle their deck and I'll stress this, only one player needs to do this. It just makes the game flow a lot faster and makes setup easier for the next game as well. One player will shuffle their deck and take out six cards and then all other players will take out the exact same six cards looking at the number in the top corner. So everyone will have the exact same hand in the first voyage. From there, players uh, secretly select a card face down and everyone will reveal those cards, putting them in order from left to right, starting from the lowest working your way to the highest number. Once that has been done, players will then trigger any daytime abilities, which is indicated by the sun symbol here. So each card working left to right, you'll, indicate, you'll activate the, the sun or the daylight ability on the cards if they have one. If they don't, just pass over them. Once you've worked your way to the end of the line, you then go the opposite way for the dusk abilities. Some cards don't have a dusk ability, again, just skip over that card's ability. But in the dusk phase is when you get to collect your loot. So this is the setup for the start of the second voyage and we're in day one. So starting from right working left, this player would take first pick of the loot and take that into their ship holding, which is just the area in front of you. Every piece of loot has an ability. So th this is really where the game is made up. It's the abilities of the cards and the abilities of the loot tokens that create combinations and make you have tactical uh, maneuvers or strategic decisions to make throughout the game to try and have the most money locked away in your treasure chest at the end of the game. That is the ultimate aim. So working right to left, each player takes a piece of loot uh, now, I should point out, I've got four pieces here, assuming it was a four player game and there were four cards out here. All of the pieces of loot would be taken by uh, one for each player, unless uh, their uh, card was eliminated from the island, then they will not take a piece of loot. Assuming they do though, every player takes a piece of loot and then the nighttime phase comes and each player takes these cards back to their ship holdings where they activate any nighttime abilities, which is indicated by a moon symbol. Then we move on to day two. Starting again, everyone picking a card, revealing them, placing with a number order, doing daytime abilities, dusk abilities, picking the loot while in the dusk phase, bringing the cards back, activating nighttime abilities, until we get to the final day where at the very end of the nighttime abilities there, you activate the end of voyage abilities, which are these anchored symbols here. So you'll collect money or potentially lose money for uh, loot tokens that you have collected. You'll get to do things potentially like keeping a shipmate in your ship for the next voyage, because at the end of the voyage, all the cards in your ship go to your, your discard pile. You don't get to keep them from round to round. So the game is really about trying to find combinations of cards that work together, playing cards at advantageous moments, and trying to find uh, the way to get the most money. Now, I'll point out that this is just one side of the board. There is another side, which is the stormy side, where all the loot tokens have very different abilities. There's also a set of cards, uh, cardboard tokens, I should say, that 
indicate each of these abilities for both the calm and the stormy side and you can actually shuffle those and play with a combination of both abilities so you get each game you play from the tokens themselves. You will not go through all of these cards in a given game. There is just so much uh, variability in these powers, so much to explore. The artwork is lovely and it's a really, really clever game. One of the other things I wanted to point out here was the reputation track. This is a tiebreaker mechanism. So if two players play the same card, you then look to the reputation track and play those cards in the order uh, shown on the reputation track. So for example, if blue and green were to have played the exact same card, blue would go in the leftmost spot and green would go in the rightmost. It does mean blue will activate their ability first in the daytime, but it will mean green gets first pick of loot when it comes to the dusk uh, phase. So there's a push and pull and trying to figure out what cards your opponents are going to play. And there is an element of you can try and figure that out because you all have the same cards, but as you go through the different voyages, any leftover cards in your hand will remain for the next voyage. So you're trying to remember who's played what and making sure that you are timing things right with playing a high enough number to get the loot that you want and not get stuck with the dud stuff. That's a basic overview of the game and uh, it's, there's really not much else to it. The rule book is very well laid out, but uh, we'll jump back up and I'll share some of my thoughts with you. So, what are my final thoughts on Libertalia? Well, in all of my games, I had a blast. I've absolutely enjoyed each of them and each of them have felt very, very different from one another, mainly because of the deck of cards. Now, I've only played on the calm side, but I've had a read of the stormy side abilities for the loot tokens. And while there is a big difference, the vast majority of your mileage in the replayability of this game is going to come from this deck. In my first ever game of this, we had one particular character called the Brute, which came out, which allows you to eliminate cards from the island, which was absolutely devastating. Um, and since looking through the rest of the abilities in this deck, there's actually quite a lot of take that. So if you're not into conf high conflict games, I would probably steer you away from this. There's going to be moments where someone's going to take that piece of loot that you wanted because they'll deny you from completing a set or they'll take a saber token and use it to eliminate your person from the iron so you get no loot. There's lots of little ways you can sort of have a jab at people, which I really enjoy and it's all in lighthearted good fun, but for some people it might rub them the wrong way. I feel like there is quite an element of luck in this, a little bit of strategy in trying to figure out who might play what because they're vying for certain loot tokens. But at the same time, I feel like there's just a little bit of luck involved in the way that the cards fall, um, which isn't the end of the world. This is definitely a lighthearted game. It's not supposed to be a heavy complex game. I think it doesn't overstay its welcome. It, I think it's really hitting all the points it's trying to for the game it's trying to be. I think they've absolutely knocked this out of the park. The production is fantastic. The art's amazing and eye-catching. The tokens are really great. These nice Azul chunky plastic tokens and they are printed double-sided so you don't have to worry about which way you're turning them as you seed the board with more loot tokens. I don't have the metal coins, but I have seen them and they look amazing. If you're into that sort of thing, I would highly recommend getting those with the game. And overall, I'm just really happy with it. I think it's a fantastic game. It's so easy to teach. I gave you the overview in just a couple of minutes and I look forward to playing it more. It's honestly a real, it's a real joy to play. And like I said, that comes down to these cards. Each and every game, the combination of cards been going to be played will vary wildly, but I'm excited to see what combinations I can pull out and the timing that can trigger and with the different loot cart, uh, loot tokens that come out, just there's so much to explore in this game. I, I highly recommend it. So if you are at all interested in Libertalia Winds of Galecrest, I recommend having a look at it. 
It's beautiful. I've really enjoyed every play and you'll definitely be hearing about this on the podcast. So until then, I'll catch you next time and I hope your next game's a sizzling one.